Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Sinesh Sundays. I hope you guys are doing well. So today I want to talk to you guys about something and this was sparked because I've been meaning for a while to talk about these things but I and I'm pretty sure you guys have probably gone through similar experiences. I did a question sticker and I asked you guys what kind of content you would like to see from me and somebody commented you know more lifestyle chatty let me actually so she suggested you know relationships mental health navigating through life etc and this is something that I, I feel like not a lot of people speak about and I'm gonna speak about it today not because I want these people to watch and feel bad or be crappy but I want to convey the message of being okay to be the villain in someone's story and you know people are going through a lot in the world people are dealing with their own mental health struggles people are sometimes just shitty people there's no other explanation for it but besides being a crappy shitty person who refuses to do the healing work don't even get it twisted as much as we are all aware or as much as you guys who are watching this video are aware that you need to do healing or you need to become a better person you need to you know strive for bigger and better for yourself most importantly there are a lot of people walking around this earth that don't know what it is to be healed that don't know what it is to be happy with themselves and so they're gonna find a problem with everybody else but themselves so I'm going to share some stories with you guys. I'm going to try not to go into too much detail, but basically just share with you guys how I'm okay with being the villain in people's stories. I'm pretty sure there are plenty more people who feel like I'm a shitty person and who benefited from me having no boundaries. And then when I put boundaries in place, I became the bad person. And I'm really okay with that. I'm really, really okay with that. Um, I feel like there's been a lot of people who I have befriended that were okay with using me for what I came with and not necessarily being reciprocal in the friendship or the, the relationship or the situation, whatever it was called, right? I have done a lot of work on myself. From as young as preschool um you know i was i don't want to single anybody out and i don't want anybody to feel shit re-watching this video but growing up things were always pointed out like oh you're acting like this or oh you know like if you acted confident it was like oh you're acting too big for your boots and this was nothing that my my direct family said but this is things that i was exposed to and you know granted like okay maybe sometimes i'd get out of hand but that's like every child growing up you're learning you you're growing you're glowing you are growing through experiences you having your different glow ups at every point in time you know and i was very aware of my shortcomings during my primary school years you know um, I also had you know I wouldn't say bullies per se but I had people who would push me aside because I didn't have anything to offer them or people who saw me as less than because I didn't have as much as they did um, so I've experienced a, a, a varying degree of things throughout my life, primary school, high school, now in adolescence as well. And I've worked exceptionally hard to become the person that I am today. I, if I look back 10 years ago, I was in matric. I was head girl of a high school. I don't mention this a lot because I feel like it's not such a big deal you know but it is a big deal I was head prefect of a school for 2013 and I didn't realize my full potential until I reached that point and every other year after that was me just fulfilling 
this potential that I didn't see that everybody saw in myself like everybody was seeing something that I couldn't see in myself so I had to do the work and I had to build my confidence and I had to build my self-esteem and I had to be okay especially through being on social media being okay with not making everybody happy because I'm not Priyani and with that came a lot of experiences and this last experience that I've had was just this year and I was shocked out of my mind but let me take you guys through the first experience a couple of years ago I had a friend you know similar vibes whatever the case is and we were supposed to go into business together and my gut feeling was telling me something's not right here let's you know hang 10 um, drama had happened and I decided I wanted to remove myself from the situation because it was just not meant for me fast forward I was at a client it was a group booking and my client who had through some interaction had her as a service provider in some way shape or form had relayed to me what was being said and at that point I was none the wiser. I didn't think there was anything or any issues or whatever the case is but I heard the drama and I thought to myself this is the furthest from the truth the fact that you're spreading lies just because you don't like me or just because you think there was a concept that I copied or I used your concept I, I will never sit here and steal somebody's work or not give credit to somebody but anyway I don't want to get into the nitty-gritty of that when I heard the story this was a couple of years ago now I didn't feel the need to go and approach this person or DM her and ask her what's the story like why are you saying shit behind my back because I knew that what was being said was a lie and I think to an extent the people that relayed the the conversation to me also knew that something is not hunting on proper here but I also maintain when you are a good person everything being said about you will come back to your ears every single thing I even have exes who I won't even claim to be my exes but my name is still in their mouths and I know that for a fact because everything comes back to me so I didn't feel the need to message I don't feel the need to confront her and say why are you talking about me like what's the story what's the drama what's the vibes whatever the case is I was just like I'm gonna let you be do what you must say what you have to say I know the truth God knows the truth and I don't have to defend myself to anyone because I'm okay being the villain in people's stories another instance was you know I give advice on relationships because I have done so much wrong myself in relationships. I have waited myself three, four or five months for a man to show attention, affection, interest in you. And I probably did that when I was in high school also. I waited like yonks for somebody to confirm their feelings or whatever the case is. That's why I didn't really have boyfriends in high school. I don't even remember having, I've never had a serious boyfriend in high school. Why must I lie? Never. But it was those experiences that make me knowledgeable to speak on things that I do speak on. So I, this was a friend of a friend. I'm obviously wanting to get out more, wanting to meet new people. And I think that experience kind of shut me off, off of going out and meeting new people because I didn't want to put it, be put in that position again. But um it was basically a setup where you know invited out um i don't know how to describe this without going into detail but there was a situation with a guy on her end and me being the woman in power girl that i am 
me being the oh my god i just went through such a shitty relationship in the past year i am not gonna let my other girlies go through that i'm gonna empower them to make better choices to be better do better and just want more for themselves and not accept the bare minimum from a man my first toxic relationship guys i waited a year and a half for this man to tell me he wanted something serious from me and when he was ready to want something serious from me i was already checked out and i said i am sorry but i cannot do this okay so i've been there sorry guys i had to change cameras because my other camera battery died but basically you know i had been there done that gone through the experience and i wanted to empower my fellow young ladies because <sighs> i wish somebody had shook me and told me don't wait for this man don't wait for him to change don't wait for him to show you that he cares because that day is never gonna come it's he's always gonna fall short in that category because if he doesn't tell you from the beginning that he wants you and he wants to be with you the answer is he doesn't know what he wants and the back and forth hot and cold is not what a relationship is supposed to be we think that if men are hot and cold and they give us attention here and they give us attention there then that means they want to be with us that's not it so long story short there was a situation that she was going through and i said you know what like trying to empower her you need to think about these things you need to think about what your non-negotiables are you need to have a list of what you want and what you don't want and you shouldn't have to tolerate bare minimum behavior from a man point blank period don't tolerate bare minimum behavior let's not get it twisted all of us are guilty of tolerating bare minimum behavior and men are guilty of dishing bare minimum behavior but if you're with someone that's willing to work for you that's willing to put the time the effort the energy to work for you relationships are hard guys relationships are hard there are so many factors that play a role in your relationship whether it be family whether it be you guys individually whether it be the company they keep whether it be the choices that they make finances jobs careers whatever the case may be there's always going to be a level of difficulty in your relationship life is not perfect relationships are not perfect you have to pick who you want to be with and move in that direction it's never going to be perfect it's never going to be amazing it's never going to be everything you envisioned and more you just have to take everything one day at a time breathe and work through your challenges with your person but this was obviously not the case and then it was a thing of i became the bad person i'm not going to go into detail like i said i was made to be the shitty person and i should have realized from the beginning and i realize this now if you don't know where you stand with someone and if you are not close friends with them don't say anything as much as you want to come from a place of care for another woman even though you don't know her in the best way sometimes it's better to just shut up and listen even though it's exhausting to hear the same thing over and over again shut up and listen and that's my advice i'm giving to myself and to you guys If you don't know someone good enough and you don't know how they're going to take your advice, don't say anything at all. Don't say anything at all. I've known this information for months. Do I feel an inkling to message her and say to her that I know every single shitty thing she said about me? No. I'm okay being the villain in someone's story. I'm okay being the shitty person in someone's story because I tried 
to empower them or I tried to convey a message. I know that I went into that conversation with the best of intentions. The lies that were carried out afterwards, the cattiness, the bitchiness, all of that stuff that transpired afterwards was out of my control. You have to walk into every situation knowing that you are the best person at that point in time. And you had the best of intentions for that person at that point in time. I have never intentionally hurt anyone. I have never intentionally made someone feel shit. I have never intentionally gone into a conversation saying, I'm going to make this person feel like the shittiest person that ever walked this earth. Never days. I've never even done that to my exes who have broken me. I haven't even done that to them. So why would I do that to a woman whose struggles I know exist? I'm a woman myself. So I knew I had the best of intentions and the story was spun to make me seem like I'm a shitty person. And I was just like, I know the truth and God knows the truth. And also you retelling the lies, you know the truth. And I think most importantly, if I approach the situation and I go to these people and I say, I heard you said so and so about me, what is it going to fix? What is it going to fix? If you say that, are they going to go back and tell those people that no, they were lying? They're not going to do that. They're not going to go back and say, oh, this, that and the other. Let people say what they want to say about you. I'm not going to live my life with regrets. I'm not going to live my life feeling like I should have, shouldn't have said something when I know I'm opinionated and I should speak my mind. And I've also been in situations where, <sighs> actually I don't want to talk about this because I feel like it's taken me over a year to fully comprehend and get over that kind of hurt. But if you are not in the right circles then you will feel like you have to walk on eggshells you will feel like you can't say what you truly want to say and I'm not perfect guys don't ever get it twisted I'm not perfect I am a work in progress I know that I make mistakes and I will own up to my mistakes and I think my mistake is wanting to see the best in everyone and wanting the best for them and not realizing that they're not the kinds of people that are open to that or open to hearing that. And I'm, I have an open heart. I value people, I value connections and I will make time for people who I truly value but I don't think that's reciprocated for me and that's where I need to draw my boundaries you know I also I can be a bit fussy I can be a bit stubborn I can be a bit moody but I try not to be those things when I'm amongst people because I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of a moody person you know and you know you can try and do all these things and be a good person and all of those things but I'm not perfect like I'm saying I'm not perfect and I I have put myself in situations because I chose to see the good in those people even when they showed me how bad they were and yes, maybe I'm a shitty person because I didn't fully explain why I'm walking away from the friendship. I just ghosted. And maybe I'm a shitty person because I ran away from conflict and I would rather not address a topic rather than address it and go through all the anxiety, panic attacks, overthinking. 
I'd rather just not address it because if I address it, what is it going to do for my life? Because I'm telling you now, like, I'm going to have panic attacks. I'm going to have anxiety. I'm going to wonder why I'm not good enough. And I've wondered that for my entire life, you guys. Up until the last couple of years, I hit depression at 24. It's only been for the last four years that I have not questioned whether I'm good enough or not. Up until four years ago, I was still questioning, am I good enough? Still questioning if I will ever be someone in the content creation space, in the influencer space, if I will ever be a success of myself, if I will ever be good enough to be in this space. Just four years ago. And it took me hitting rock bottom depression for me to get to that point. After I hit depression, I went through a shitty, crappy, horrible situation breakup. That could have absolutely broke me. Absolutely. Did it? No. Because I had already built up the strength to get through whatever life was going to throw at me. My entire life, life has been throwing curveballs at me. <sighs> My entire life. And yes, they are amazing highlights. Amazing. But they are crappy lowlights. Crappy lowlights. So, I hope in some way, shape or form that you know that you walk into every situation with the best of intentions and if you then become the bad person, I hope you will have the knowledge and the growth within your heart and your soul to accept it as being the villain in someone's story. Because trust me, you are going to be the villain in someone's story, somewhere, somehow, in somebody's story, in their side notes, in their sidelines, whatever. And that's not your burden to bear. And one thing I learned when I was going through depression is you have to accept the things that you can't change. And I think over the years, I've also learned coping mechanisms to not send myself into a spiral. So me not approaching conversations with people, even though I've heard them talk shit about me, is me not sending myself into a spiral. Is me acknowledging, okay, they said what they said, but it's not true. If I approach it, what is it going to change? They're not going to change anything. Are they going to go back and say, oh, I was lying. They're not going to say that. They're going to stick with their story. And that's fine. Allow people to stick with their story, be the villain in someone's story. At the end of the day, who you are, what your intentions are, what you bring to the table is between you and God and the people who accept you for who you truly are and what your heart brings to the table. So I hope that in some way, shape or form, this video made sense to you guys. I hope that you realize it's okay to be the villain in someone's story. It's okay to to let go of things that you can't change. It's okay to have people say shit about you. I'm going to read you guys this post that I came across this morning. I take rumors as compliments. Oh, I take rumors as a compliment. The fact that you're bringing my name onto tables I don't sit at shows your obsession. Stay bothered. And it made me think. So I'm not saying be a shitty person. I'm not saying don't hold yourself or hold yourself accountable. You know, there's things that I could have learned and now I learned don't get into friendships. Like, fully understand what somebody's 
intentions are are they just there to use you i obviously getting get a lot of people who want to jump on the sanesh makeup bandwagon and you have to sift through those people and whenever because there'll be a lot of gossip going around in the world whenever you hear something bad about someone always ask yourself what that person did in order for them to have a bad story to tell you about that person granted not all stories work out that way some people are just shitty but you don't have to be a shitty person in a world full of crappy fake shitty people be the genuine authentic real soul out there and trust me you will have people who resonate you will have people who gravitate who understand your heart who you don't have to spend hours trying to convey what's in here because they just understand they just get it so that is it for this video you guys remember that your vibe attracts your tribe you need to align with people who whose values align with yours and at the end of the day remember that it's okay to be the villain in someone's story as long as you know you had the best of intentions for that person and they didn't receive it the way you intended but your intentions were nevertheless still good it's okay to be the villain in someone's story it's really okay so with that being said thank you guys so much for watching this episode i hope that i was able to convey um these scenarios effectively and i hope that it was able to give you guys a sense of it's not a bad thing being the villain in someone's story you could be the peachiest ripest peach in the bunch and somebody will still not like peaches you could be the tastiest biryani of all time with no ilachi pots and somebody will still not like biryani so remember you are not biryani and you can't make everybody happy and it's okay accepting that you are going to be the villain in someone's story somewhere along the line is just a part of growth and part of you being human and part of you accepting the things that you cannot change that is it for me comment down below let me know what you guys would like to speak would like me to speak about next and i'll talk to you guys in the next one bye bye don't forget to slay all day every day with that without makeup